One of the questions that comes up when talking about waggler fishing on a river is whether you should be fishing a stick float instead of a waggler. Are there advantages to each of them? They both have advantages and disadvantages. Sometimes mixing the two up can work quite well on the river. And he you pays your money and takes your choice. As a match angler, it was quite common to um, have more than one rod set up, possibly with both a waggler and a stick float to fish the same line. You tend to think of fishing a stick float quite close in and a waggler further out, and a waggler is certainly a method you would use to fish the far bank of not too wide rivers, but rivers that are maybe up to 25 yards wide or maybe a little bit more. In other words, maximum catapult range. And quite often you see people talking about fishing stick floats and they're fishing very close range, almost off the end of the rod tip. And I've always liked to fish sticks, anything from very close in to uh, well out into the middle of the river and beyond, uh, certainly if the wind's favourable up to uh, catapult range. And with floats like the John Dean floats, you can certainly cast over 20 yards with a, a stick float that only takes sort of a five number four shot. So both floats give you the ability to get to the distance, a very different presentation from each. This season uh, is now into the first week of August. I fished the Stour uh, probably a good dozen, over a dozen times probably fished about 11 or 12 different swims and they varied from little holes in the weed, little tiny runs, to fairly open water, sometimes deep water, anything up to um, 10 or 11 foot deep, sometimes shallower uh, swims that are only four or five foot deep. Some of the swims have been um, very slow moving other swims have had quite a lot of pace and we've had a couple of floods in that, that six or seven weeks. One night on the stow, neither a stick float nor a uh, waggler was going to work. It just had too much pace, too many boils. And I ended up fishing a uh, fairly heavy croquel even, even though I was only fishing not much further than a rod length out to try and get the bait down. And uh, that worked to a degree anyway. So some of the floats I've been using this season on the Stour, I use this fairly standard Waggler float at the start of the season. It takes nearly uh, four treble A as locking shot, fairly thick tip. It's an insert peacock, piece of thinner peacock quill there. And that's about three and a half millimetres thick. And now I'm starting to use more floats with uh, hollow pole float tips which show up even better than just the painted tips. It's a fairly simple float, casts well, fish just a few shot down the line, maybe uh, a few number of eights and tens. So light shotting down the line, that's the important thing about waggler fishing like this. So you, you can catch fish on the drop, you can drag on the bottom, you can hold it back to a degree and it's easy to cast where you want it, not too affected by the wind. I also use some different wagglers. This is a, one of the old um, Drennan Canal Crystals. And it, this is a 4BB one. I've got a very few of these left. They've got um, two millimeter tips. I've actually replaced the original tapered tips with two millimeter hollow pole float tips, which fit quite nicely and uh, it's actually got I think two AB shots which are halfway between a AAA and a BB, a number one and a number four and then it would have a couple of number tens down the line. When I use these for fishing up in the water in sort of quite weedy swims, often fishing about four foot deep, uh, there's so little shot down the line even though that there's a tear on the hook. It, you do catch fish on the drop. There's a big debate whether these are more or less visible than um, 
floats that are just painted. I suspect they look silver underwater and I'm sure the float the fish know what what they are or they're certainly not invisible for all their uh, hype. This one's got um, the surface has become sort of matted with usage so it's certainly not crystal clear anymore but a useful float unfortunately you can't get these anymore I think there are some versions with uh, a loading at the base but I've preferred the unloaded ones but I've caught some good fish on this float this season just dropping it into a little run where it would almost be difficult to to get the uh, a stick float to settle into that run and just letting it run through Unfortunately, the run that I found has weeded up so quickly that it's disappeared. It was only about five foot wide and now it's a, and now it's not even a foot wide. So uh, that was one of those opportunities. The two stick floats I've been using are versions like of this one, not always exactly this float. This is a, a John Dean float that uh, I think this is six number four shot it up with number sixes uh, not non-lead number sixes with a two or three number eights below that and I've also been using the five number four versions nice float that casts well and I've also been using some homemade versions which is very similar float really it's got a plastic stem that made from a kid's paintbrush and this seems to have three number fours on it I think there's don't quite know where I've been using that one but I have same sort of thing though very similar design float and just shows that if you can't buy a, a John Dean anymore unless you're very lucky at a car boot sale you can make the equivalent with a bit of balsa and uh, one of these kids paintbrush sets which often only cost about a pound if you can find them. They're not that hard to find in sort of pound shops and things like that. Now the great advantage with a stick float is you can slow it right down. You don't need a centre pin reel to do that. These don't take a lot of weight. If the wind's fairly favourable you can get behind it and just ease it through. Last night I was fishing on a stretch of the stour and initially I caught quite a bit off the bottom with tears catching odd little dace and quite a few roach around about three or four ounces and as the session went on and I was only fishing about two and a half hours ended up deeper and deeper and deeper and in the end I was fishing about two foot over depth which didn't strike me as normal for tear fishing but it worked uh, I was holding back quite hard by then I was getting a lot of little tiny dink dinks and I think they might have been dace but Every so often I'd, I'd get a little spell of roach, two or three roach in a burst and then they'd go again. Quite why they were so cagey I don't know. Just for once, and this has been because it's been happening so often, I didn't get any pike trouble whatsoever. So I wasn't aware of any pike in the swim. They, they might have been down there, I don't know. But certainly, although this series is on waggler fishing, don't neglect the stick float. Be a, prepared to set up both try if if the bite's slow try the other other float adjust the depths adjust the shotting as you go along if ever i get the right conditions i do want to show fishing uh, in a downstream wind with a waggler at the moment there's so much weed on the river the sort of stretches where it would be nice and open and, and good to show it wouldn't be able to fish if we throw it throw the float out there it'll just snag up on the weed out here there and everywhere but that will be coming and, and a few other things with waggler fishing as well but for the meantime I'll just uh, leave you with that thought think about setting up both look for their advantages and don't think that one is always the answer one float is always, always the answer the waggler or the stick Quite often it's both and the fish can get cagey to presentation from one float and then fall for the slightly different presentation even though you can have the same hook on there same lines everything else even similar shotting it is different it does go through the swim differently and sometimes they they fall for that just for a little while 
hope you've enjoyed this uh, video and uh, goodbye for now see you next time